everyone, and welcome to episode 26 of the British Boxing Blog podcast. Um, back, back again after another break. <laughs> At the start of the year, we said, oh, we're like, uh, you know, going to do this far more regularly. And for a while, we were doing well, but, you know, a bit of a hiatus again. But here we are, we're back yeah. in business again. Episode 26. Injuries, a couple of late withdrawals, <laughs> and here we are. You know how it is. Uh, so I go back. Um, I think we're gonna have to start charging paper. Listen, because we only um, we only do it twice a year or something like that. If anyone's stuck with us this far, then and anyone's listening, and yeah, thank you. Um, a bit more intrigue, a bit more anticipation, <laughs> over there. It's out of the blue. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I here we are. Um, it is good to be back, and I say this every time, but it's good. Um, there's a lot of good podcasts out there at the minute, boxing stuff, and I think it's, um, you know. It's nice to throw off two pennies in there as well. I, I think, think everyone, by now, you've probably listened to everything you can about AJ from obviously down last week. Yeah. But to be honest, we'll be giving our thoughts on that. Because <laughs> like, Golovkin won last night as well. Um, I quite, quite, I think quite weekend, under the it? radar, yeah. I think the lack of um, television coverage on that one over this side of the pond has maybe why dampened was, why it a bit. Was that then? Because. It's a bizarre one, and I've seen a few arguments about it because I know I've mentioned in one of our tweets earlier this week or this weekend even about um, the UFC being on box office on BT, mm-hmm. and it's a bit bizarre because one of the things that BT Sport, the main selling point, was the UFC for them. Yeah, and you think, oh, well, they've got the boxing as well, and like UFC is a bit more niche, and I'm not going to go off totally on that, no. but it's similar to like, a Golovkin boxing event. It's yeah. not on a really sociable hour over here. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't imagine it, him against Steve Rolls would have done massive viewing figures. But just, when then Golovkin yeah. fights Canelo, then, they'll be whacking it straight on box office, and you think they've just missed a bit yeah. of a trick putting it on. And okay. uh, whether it's Sky, whether it's them, because I know he's on the zone over there as I well now. The whole Sky match room the zone thing was hand in hand, and basically we get what they get. And like, so we were on the zone last night. Why did we not get it? Like. Whose decision was it to be like, nah, Golovkin's not worth it? Sure, this is the thing, I hinted at talking about it again with BT and like production values and all the rest mm-hmm. of it. Like, they've got the cover, all they could have done was transmit it and show it to their own coverage, which they normally tend to do. Paul Smith in a studio. <laughs> no, I mean, well, didn't even else. need that, did it? Like, uh, they could have literally just no, gone no. straight to the action and. Nah, they could have, but they would straight to the coverage of Lockwood Fight. Their like, commentators, their announcement team, the rest of it. Like, it just like sort of hints at. The Maybe the, the relationship yeah. between DAZN and Sky isn't as tally as yeah. they would have you believe. Like you say, though, as soon as they have made Golovkin Kenan or Fay or Golovkin Callum Smith or Golovkin anyone else, they'll have it straight back down your throat, you know what I mean? And then, but he's the elite, yeah, this elite right. boxer, yes. Yeah, the they're they're not prepared to invest in him. I'll be off the show on a Saturday night. I think they missed a trick, and you know, it was, there was nothing there was nothing else boxing wise on, on telly this weekend, so you think, well, you could have, uh, could have had the whatever small action you got over the weekend. You had it yourself. Do you know what I mean? You could have. Everyone. Like, I don't think again. The boxing fix would have tuned into that. I don't think there's an excuse now order. for um, not showing that sort of thing in today's market where you've got that many different channels yeah, it's, it's competing against each right, other. Right? They yeah. should be trying to outdo each other at every little yeah. turn, and they're just not. It's it just not. seems to be this sort of complacency on both sides of it, and still. No one's really yeah. pushed on and kicked on. You're not talking about a donkey. You're talking about one of the elite fighters in the world. So no, this is it. He's, he is top class and yeah. in a good fight. It is pay per view. But you just think, right, well, if you want us to spend 20 quid on yeah. him against Callum Smith or no, Billy Joe yeah. Saunders, whoever gets part of them, like even Canelo, like yeah. not having any British interest. Stick a lot of your charts on your normal telly, right? Yeah, give the fans it's some fun. Back with a YouTube channel, we have to. A YouTube stream. Yeah, give some people a platform to watch it because. Like you say, they'll, they'll charge through the north for all the streaming subscriptions and like they do in America or box office, you know what I mean? And But you can't do all the fucking luck on it, it's a bit annoying now. And then I think this is what sticks in fans' throats a little bit, yeah. especially in boxing. It seems like, and it's probably not, but it seems like that it's one of the very few sports mm. where the fans are so often trapped with such contempt. Yeah. Like, there's not any real like g- sense of giving anything back to the fans, and obviously the money, the fighters getting paid and stuff, that comes first. But in order to do that, in order to get the fighters paid, you have to get the fans on side, and it seems that 
at the minute, the promoters are happy enough to get them on site just enough mm. to cover their costs and to get themselves paid. And there's not that any, like, you're not getting anything for nothing, which Absolutely. leads into think, indirectly yeah. like AJ from last week, which we will be talking about in great detail. And I think boxing has a tendency quite a lot to shoot itself in the foot. Like, you go from that massive goodwill that you had from World Boxing Super Series in Glasgow on normal sky, Josh Taylor, you knew you all that mint. Like, boxing was buzzing that weekend, and everyone was Twitter was, oh, this is amazing. And then you go and think, nah, I'm not bothered putting Glock on. Do you know what I mean? Like, the whole boxing Twitter again is buzzing off Glock in this world, like, today. I know it was against Steve Rose, but he's still a big name, and like oh, you can't, people want to see him. A lot of fans, oh, just, like big um, fans of him, and they want they want to see him, as you say. And I like, just thought it was a shame, and I just thought, and it, it for his, it, it's obviously been pulled or a late decision, not really, because it was shown up initially. People will say, you know, it's on Sky Sports Action, and you know, it was shown. I didn't even know that. Like, sure. Some people saying, oh, it's on Sky, and it, I think it, when it first got announced, oh yeah, it'd be on Sky Sports, and then suddenly this week people would be asking, is it? Because I don't know, I'm a semi TV guy that we plan with and. You know, there was a lot of confusion going on later in the last week saying, well, some people have heard it was on Sky and some people haven't, and I don't know, just it would have been nice to someone clear that up. But anyhow, nice boxing on TV, aren't there? So I saw there's been very little action well, the on reason, TV this weekend. To speak yeah, up. and the reason I it sort of linked it to AJ there is because obviously there's a tweet going around, I think it was BBC announced something about the yeah. viewing figures and like over a million. Um, Viewers had been done or caught or whatever. Yeah. I don't know how they've been found to have watched it illegally. Mm-hmm. And it comes back to that argument of like pay per view versus versus streaming and stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been guilty of both. I've paid for some shit shows <laughs> over the years. That's and similar. I've like streamed a few as well. And as I say, it gets to that point where boxing fans are like, well, hang on. Like, like did you see um, before yeah. I did you see Steve Bunce's reply to it? <laughs> oh, for anyone that hasn't, that. I'll see if I can find it. Um, he basically went off on one, like, in the most bizarre, like, argument. He, he probably had a good point somewhere, but That's it was just clear. so like, dramatised, it was so dramatic that it just totally, um, like, I don't, know, I don't know how to put it. It, just, it, it was bizarre. I'm going to see if I can find it now. Um, I'm going on... Da, 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 da. Yeah, so the BBC put a, pir- a piracy company have claimed nearly 1 million unlicensed UK viewers used unauthorised channels to watch Anthony Joshua lose his heavyweight world title to Andy Ruiz Jr. And someone has like quoted that tweet with a little emoji of a middle finger going up. <laughs> so obviously you can interpret that whether he's yeah. sticking the finger up to the pay-per-view or so. he's sticking his finger up to those that have pirated it, like, which he, I think, claimed later on, but I think I know where he's going with that. Uh, so Steve Punt replies... What if a fighter dies in a pay-per-view fight? Well done to the million who rob boxers of the money they risk their life for. Oh, the wow. dead boxers' families suffer. Please think. What a shit. I, uh, I replied something a bit more <laughs> eloquent than that, I think. He hasn't blocked us since, anyway. But, like... I think that adds to the list, doesn't <laughs> Well, well, not as far as I'm aware. I've still yeah. managed to find that. But, like, honestly, like... Anthony Joshua, has, and again, it's, I understand there is a principle there and there's a viewpoint somewhere in there, but in terms of boxers who need financial support, no. they're not the ones. Yeah. Like, I, it's it's bizarre. So yeah. just because they're in, like, like, they're not charging pay-per-view to cover costs for their family. Where do you draw the line with that? Where do you stop that argument? Like, where, oh, you could. Where's, like, where's your moral... Stance and where does the moral obligation stop with this stupid argument? Like, like any boxer, yes, yeah. Yeah. it's like saying, oh, any, yeah. you know, pump loads of money into any show, it doesn't matter. Like, it, it's irrelevant, it's yeah. it's bizarre, it's and silly. like it was a really bizarre. So like, they're all like, arguing, don't get me wrong, there are arguments for pay per view, yeah. but the Dillian White one's a great example because. Matchroom have created this monster with him. No. They've built him into this pay per view fighter. And he's now accustomed yeah, yeah. to making those purses. He's not going to shortchange mm-hmm. himself. And whether you agree with White's valuation of himself and of his abilities and his drawing power and all of this, doesn't matter. It does not matter if you yeah. think he's pay per view level or not. He's been doing that for the last few shows. He's been getting these million pound, however many purses. Mm-hmm. And he's at the point now where. He's getting offered money to fight Joshua, and he said, "Well, no, I'm not going to take that offer. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that." But like you say, they have to create that monster. Are you right? And if they now are at the point where they have to charge pay per view to meet his salary demand, his purse demands, then that's their problem. That's where they're at. So, 
Yes, they can try and drum up the interest. They can try and wow, make like it sure. Because that show, I wouldn't mind paying twenty no, for that. I like that fight, and I like that. It's that a good show. fight. There's some good 50-50 fights on the undercard. I think, yeah. like, other than when you've got Dave Allen, Dave Price, Price that'll, yeah. regardless again of the ability and the level of that fight, that does catch the public's interest. Is, right? You can it's pick holes in the technical yeah, oh, level of both of that, those still boxes. have got two Lego old fellas and two fellas who can bang. And, you know, they've both got that sort of air of vulnerability about them. And, you know, how actually good is Dave Allen and it's pricey. There's, there's a decent... I, that's a fight to get people talking 100%. So, like, even that as a chief support, you can look at it, well, many yeah. critics will think, oh, it's not the best. No, it's not. Both. Technically, it's not, but then... It's still an intriguing fight. It's, yeah, it's like you can make an argument for both men, and obviously near the time we'll, <laughs> if we do a podcast ever no. again, we'll talk about it and we'll discuss it. We'll do then like you... Poland on your stand, dude. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah, that weekend, isn't it? Yeah. I imagine that on the way back. Playing the Polish sports, but I'm not uh, white with you, that's... And then, oh like, God. further down the card, you've got Charlie Duffield, Dan Aziz for a southern area. So, for us, mm-hmm. like, that, that's a really good fight. Yeah. There'll be people looking at me and why is, there, why is there a southern area fight so high on the, the billing of a, a pay-per-view card? Here's a question for you. Aye. Would you prefer to see southern area fights on shows like that or Tom Goodwill on, say, like, Steve Goodwin, your call type show? Where would you, if you were a fighter, where would you like to see? Or, or, where, or where, where would you like to be? Does it get That's two different questions in one? That I thought. I should have asked you in boxing this. Uh, I thought we'll get it there at some point. I don't know. Steve Goodwin does his uh, is it fight, not fight talk. It's a uh, uh, fight talk. Ring ring talk or something. Fight talk's the other one. Yeah, yeah it's it's podcast. Other one. Big up fight talk. Big up ring talk. Uh, I don't know why I asked that question. It just it like I think I like seeing the one recently on 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 the next gen show, and I know there's a there's another good. Not an area title, but there's another good fight coming up there with Andre Sterling and uh, uh, Craig Richards. Similar sort of level type fight, but a good one. And I just, I, I'm a huge fan of the area title fight, as you know. Now, but I just hope sometimes it doesn't get. Yeah, it's good for the fighters because with the O2 and it's, it's huge, and they can all say, look, ah, this is. They may never get there again. You know what I mean? They might never box in that area again or, or the big show, but then sometimes. Does it get bumped out of the card and maybe not get the value it deserves? Whereas well, the thing is, with that being on a pay-per-view card, mm. it's going to be shown. True, yeah. So it'll I, be I, first fight on, but it'll be still Yeah, on. it will be shown. It's not going to be on a big card and then not yeah. televised necessarily. True. So from that point of view, yes, it's good. And this is one, not necessarily with the question you've just put on us there, but I was thinking about this in terms of how much that would cost to stage that fight. Mm. Because I would rather see that sort of fight on a pay-per-view card yeah. than oh, yeah, I get it, a yeah. matchroom yeah. prospect Smash getting paid room. maybe more uh, to fight no, an absolute, like, not a nobody, like a journeyman or whatever, yeah, or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, totally, so yeah. in terms of spending money, if I were putting a card together, that's the fight I would yeah. prefer to put on. And for again, I'm totally guessing. I've got no idea how much the purses are for that sort of fight. I think we would. But you, this is it. We are we a niche, would. very niche audience in uh, terms of boxing, and a lot of the people we interact with on Twitter would be the same. Well, but our mates, for example, the whole, who the hell's done as usually? The yeah, whole, like, this is the um, thing, and this is what constitutes. We've had this before. What constitutes yeah, a pay-per-view right. card? You've got the. I think the majority of fans, mm-hmm. boxing fans, whether however knowledgeable they are on or not, yeah. they would rather see a name that they recognise. Against a limited uh, opponent. Yeah, yeah, so say yeah. for example, just plucking someone out of the like the matchroom recent fight, like Anthony yeah. Fowler. Yeah. He's on the comeback trail. I know he's not on this card. He's on another one. But mm. his purse for a comeback fight potentially is going to be a similar yeah, value yeah. to what Dan Aziz and Charlie Duffy are getting. Yeah, they might so. get. All he right. might get a bit less than what they're earning combined, but. I don't yeah. imagine there's going to be too much difference there. I may be miles off, but mm. as an example, he would maybe draw more viewing figures to that card or a card than those two lads. Yeah. Now, in terms of those two getting on, they're going to have to shift some tickets, which they could easily. Oh, this is a Southern Area fight. Yeah. It's at the O2. I want a pay per view card. Blah blah blah. blah. So yeah. there, there's a definite draw and an upside to having those two on from the promoter's point of view and from them selling it. However, if they were headlining a local show, like the atmosphere would be a bit more intense. Maybe it would be that, like in a smaller venue, would it? I don't know. If they're getting paid a lot more to be on that bigger card, they're going to take that 
but far away it comes down to money, doesn't it? It's it's a financial thing. If there's ever any animosity with, um, from sort of your smaller or short food waters towards them thinking, God, you've robbed me of potential, you know what I mean? You've robbed me of potential headline, but one of my bills there, like a Steve Goodwin take, or if he's, say, if he does manage one of those guys, I don't know who he does, for example, Steve Goodwin or anyone else, you know, Carl Greaves or something like that, do they say, no, go on, get yourself on there, that's the biggest fight of you. You know, again, like, I don't been, know. I don't know those two personally. It's all like, obviously I've interacted with them at shows and mm. wanes and stuff, and like when I have seen them, just said hello and what have you. But from watching Steve's interviews with Martin and like from speaking to Carl Greaves on Twitter and things, and seeing some of the things yeah. his fighters say about them, I think generally they want the best for their fighters. Yeah, so true, if, they're, like, if their boxer's going to earn more money, yeah. Then it's within their interest to get them on that big show and to get them that exposure. The small whole scene has its worth for keeping the fighters active and getting them the the wins, as it were, and getting them the the action in the ring and building that momentum. But at the end of it, their goal is to get their boxers above their station, if that makes sense. There's no zero point keeping them on the small hall scene if they're ready to move up because like. Whichever boxer out that one wins, they're the Southern Area Champion, which I love in terms of an area title. That's what prospect should be aspiring to for me. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. they're in a great position, but they've maybe drawn a bit of national interest to them as well. I, I love an area title fight, and I've, I remember watching one recently, I can't remember, it was on Sky, and I, um, I can't remember which one it was. And it's mine is that I can't think of who I watched. But anyway, I see Brad Bowles won the Southern Area title last night against. Uh, on the uh, Goodwin show. So yeah, Darren Cordona. Yeah, that's the one. So that's been some boxing action this weekend to start the country. But, uh, but again, let's you... Now, relatively quiet weekend. I think we've we lost an obvious show up here. It was a, a black up call from the last week, the week before. Just injuries with Paul's Steve Ray's Scarlet show. <laughs> doing the show. And it's again, and like, you could pick any podcast episode we've ever done and there'll be something about the frustrations that the, the small whole scene face. And, uh, yeah, North East in particular for us, but yeah, up and down the country, this sort of thing will be happening. I did have a feeling that what would go, I just thought it all went a bit quiet on social media and stuff and I was getting a lesser push. It's always hard when uh, you've got not as many fights to start with anyway. That, like, yeah. again, we mentioned Steve Goodwin a fair but, bit, but his Your Call shows yeah. are sort of notorious for offered how many fights he has and well, like, you wouldn't have done the dinner show and you only got four fights and two of them fall through due to the same injury or a lack of tickets or something he left two fights and it's like well no value is there. that a card like and then you've got the summer one well that's good people don't know it's like not say the biggest i was going to say small one but it's actually a football stadium <laughs> but uh, you know what i mean it's the biggest normal show we have up here every year that's here's, a, here's a good one for you go on it's the wrestlemania of northeast boxing that's a very good open place. air stadium uh, like uh, one stand of the stadium with lights open yeah. lovely little like a marquee gazebo like covering uh, for it like for the yeah. ring it's just such a lovely setting and as you oh, castle fans that yeah. pains us to say and uh, it's class though we- we did it even before BBB it was there. So one of the class day and we've got an area title fight. And I think in recent years, I don't want to say criticism, but some of, we've sort of, it's maybe this, that's sort of 50-50 bout up there. Kind of, should have a experience. But like, it hasn't, you know, um, but this year you've got the return of a really good fight, an area title fight. Um, don't be. <laughs> Cal Wilson lost the fight. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've got a return of that. Big decent fight, which we'll touch on a bit, a bit later on, I so that's coming up. So I haven't lost the show this weekend, but other than that, well, mm. all good. And, uh, speaking of losses, should we go on to AJ, Andy Ruiz? I would talk about it probably good. a week later than most, but I guess we've now had the benefit of, say, seven days of fallout to really get that, Yeah, that's it. I've still only I watched, talk about the fight I've only watched the fight once. Talk about the fallout um, the fight, eh? Well, we'll do both, so... To start off, the fight itself, and we'll get into, it sounds daft, but we'll get into the pre-fight thing as well, mm. before, um, after talking about the actual boxing. So, the boxing, for me, was fairly simple and straightforward. Like, Andy Ruiz, full credit to him. Um, Class. We did a, well, I did a bit of a, a write-up on some of the potential reasons that it went wrong for AJ. And top of those was how well Ruiz performed. Because any of the excuses and any of the con controversy, the conspiracy yeah. theories, all of them go out the window if Ruiz goes out there and freezes. Uh, and true. he didn't. He did it he he got dropped but he, he gave a great account for himself. 
and his style, whether it was his game plan, whether that was his natural style, his natural yeah. preference for boxing, mm-hmm. really put AJ under pressure and it forced him into a fight that he didn't want to get into and ultimately that was the reason for me that Ruiz won the fight and yeah, not can say Joshua lost there, I was saying Ruiz won. He got inside, he slipped some shots, he took what Joshua had to throw either on the gloves or Again, like obviously got caught with the left hook, got dropped, got yourself back up and straight back into it. Yeah, he did that. He and from a technical that. standpoint, one of the reasons he did so well was he wasn't shy at letting his hands go. No, he wasn't. He was he wasn't. He wasn't deterred. And I think a lot of Joshua opponents, whatever level they've been at, yeah, have almost psychologically been beaten before they've got in there. Yeah. They, they haven't been prepared to let them like to do their own thing because they've been too preoccupied with what's coming back from Joshua. And despite getting hit with a good left hook, Ruiz, as I say, literally picked himself back up and continued. So every punch Joshua threw, whether he threw a jab or he threw, he was looking for a hook of his own, Ruiz was prepared to counter it and he was thrown with him. Um, and it's I've, I've listened to a few podcasts yeah. and stuff. Why do you think that sort of fear of Joshua did come from? Because when you look back now, I think it's just gives you a chance to look back then. Or like he stopped the Beckham, but I know people view Joshua and Wilder a bit differently. Like Wilder's that sort of one punch, bang, he kill you with the one punch. Whereas Joshua's maybe a bit more concussive, where there's a few more punches go in there. But then, when you think back to like Tyler and Parker and that, they weren't, and even for Beckham, they weren't massive like demolition jobs. So where does that fear like come from? I think earlier on, I think he's earlier. Yeah, earlier. when I'm talking yeah. about that fear and intimidation, yeah. I'm thinking of the likes of. Like as an example, Gary Cornish, um, uh, yeah. Michael Sprott, like these fighters got in with relatively little chance of beating Joshua. So when they've stepped in there, they've allowed him to dictate and do what he wants. And even yeah. as he stepped up through the levels, you mentioned like the likes of Takam and what have you. Uh, yeah, they came and give it a go. But did, but they, really give it did a go? they have that ultimate hundred uh, percent belief in themselves that they were going to go no, and beat Joshua? They didn't. Parker, for example. Seemed to like shell up, and whether it was the occasion that got to him, he did surrender him, like, didn't he? Like, he didn't for most of the fight, like, yeah, he leave it all in there part of the time. Just, like, but like, fighting Joshua nice. um, was almost that sort of I don't want to compare them, but like, almost that Mayweather sense of I've yeah. got the Joshua fight, but almost like a lottery win. Like you get real, you get yeah, that payday, yeah. and a lot of these opponents weren't particularly not saying they didn't come to win because they all give it a goal. So, do you think, but well, yeah. They, maybe think, the sense of the occasion got to them a bit, whereas Ruiz... Do you think with him being the late, the late, quite a late replacement, he's not... He didn't have that pressure on his shoulders. He's not going to get in shape because he's not in shape. He doesn't have to stress about this. Oh, well, he got, you know, he's also got fitness levels. So he yeah, like, I think he's been training, but I think, in the build-up. It's all like... Do you think he's like we were guilty of it. Totally yeah. dismissed him as a potential upset. Like, he's, competition a, well, he's, yeah. a, he's a talented boxer. Like, and again, no, that, 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 that is hindsight because yeah. of what he's done to Joshua. But I think naturally his style is to, to get inside the pocket and throw right. punches and he's just stuck to that basically. Yeah, he's, he's quick hands, he's counter punches. He's and what that allowed him to do or what that forced Joshua to do was go onto the back foot and try and, and box and move which isn't his natural style. It's not Joshua's at plan A. And to be honest, the alarming thing was how little of a plan B Joshua actually had. And now we can go into maybe unpick some of the potential reasons that it, it completely unraveled for him. Cause were you surprised that when Joshua knocked him down that he, you know, that wasn't just the end of it and he didn't have enough to see him off after that? Like In a way, yes, in that, that you just hint, alluded to the fact that Joshua is a really good finisher normally. Yeah, yeah, if he yeah, gets yeah. you hurt, not necessarily with the next punch or mm-hmm. one of the next punches, but he gets you out of there. He knows how to take you out, right? And he tried to do that, but I think in doing so, he lost his composure a bit, which allowed Ruiz to, to catch him back. And from that point on, he looked totally buzzed, whether it was the shot itself that, that we talk about concussion, whether that just buzzed him and he, he didn't recover. Um, like There's, there's that side trick. Is it, even against Klitschko, Joshua, when he got dropped, yes, he ultimately came back and stopped Klitschko, just but it took him a long time to that. get himself back yeah. into that and get himself going again. Klitschko whereas, left him off the hook there. Whereas Ruiz yeah. didn't. That's exactly Ruiz didn't give him yeah. that chance. No, he didn't. He Joshua likes to box at his own pace. He's right? He likes to, to take little breathers in between, in within the rounds. He likes to, not necessarily a whole round off, 
but he has time to compose himself. And because Ruiz was just coming forward and throwing punches in bunches, it didn't give Joshua that chance to reset, both like physically mm. and technically from his boxing stance, from his standpoint. And again, I think I think that drained him physically. Yeah. But also he was under mental pressure because he didn't have things all his own way. Well, he was trying change? to box to that, Ruiz's rhythm. How does that change now? So the same they fought in six months' time, five months' time, November, December. How is Ruiz not all wrong for AJ again? Like how how does Joshua come? I think he take him out early, and that's his only chance again. Or what, what's the like? How can he? What changes between Joshua's style in six months and Ruiz is going to change? He's just going to turn up biggish and let his hands go because he's fast. Like that's all he, you know. Like how does Joshua well, come at that? Or is it just someone who's stylistically all wrong for him? Always will be. I think the worrying thing from the AJ point of view was how unsure and like how much confidence he seemed to lack. Like McCracken's instructions in the corner for me was spot on yeah. in terms of jab him, walk him onto the right hand, keep the nice one two, like the straight yeah. shots. And if he'd done that, if he kept him at distance, kept him at range like he did with Parker. He could have won that fight, maybe not stopping him, but he could have gone the 12 rounds. And I think in a potential rematch, that could be at the back of their mind. Like, don't get involved in the tear up with him. Keep yeah. the distance. Try and box and move. And maybe between now and then, they work on that. The basic fundamentals of getting Joshua more comfortable on the back foot, if he has to be. It does appear that he's going to stick with McCracken, doesn't it? And I, say, I, said, I said this last week that, like, you know, I usually have to have a high profile fight against me. The first person who'd get the bullet is usually the trainer, isn't it? But. I don't know, you see a lot of fallout after these things. Of... The only reason I would see him swapping trainers is because he didn't seem to take on board what McCracken was saying. Yeah. I was saying there about the advice, and I think it was good advice from McCracken, but AJ either didn't, well, he definitely didn't, but yeah. either he wouldn't or he couldn't follow those instructions, mm -hmm. because even if you have massive doubts on AJ's ability technically, He's always been capable of holding a nice high guard, right. slamming his jab out, slamming yeah. the right hand out. But he was poor in the jab. Nah, he he, was, there, was, there was nothing there. There wasn't that snapping his shots. And again, I don't know if that's the impact of getting caught. He's, he's hurt Ruiz. He's gone to finish him. He's been caught with a heavy shot in return. And he just hasn't been able to recover from that. Yeah. And the main issue for me is whether it's physically or mentally. Well, this is it, and I was going to touch on that because it's quite refreshing to hear you just talk about the actual fight and you, you know, you, but it still seems that we're a week later now that there's this thing playing out on social media that something wasn't right. And I touched on it all last week and, you know, from off the top of my head, just, you know, just to name a few things that I've read was the funny thing he's doing with a gum shield, a pre-fight panic attack, a neck massage, He's got still under McCracken, he's took his eye the ball, he went to Miami. Like, I could go on a double figures. Oh, even hit the ball like eight times here, by the way. That's your <laughs> imagination. Like, you know, like, Keith Paul, he's lost the home there too many corporate deals. Is Eddie Hearn's fault? You know, like. Right, here we go. So, I just. Get into these what, conspiracy theories. Did you think something wasn't, you know. Now, this is the thing, right? Well, I watched the fight on the uh, Sunday yeah. and I've given my sort of technical yeah. analysis, yeah, whatever yeah. that's worth to anyone, mm -hmm. on what I saw in terms of boxing. Yeah. I knew Joshua had lost. I'd seen our group chat I on WhatsApp. So, so I right. knew he'd lost before I watched it. So because I knew he'd lost, you I picked up yeah. on his ring walk straight away. Yeah. And whether I'd have done that in... like foresight rather than hindsight yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't say I don't know but he was his gum shield was all over the place but he looked he looked like he didn't like wanna, have that belief you know what I want to sort of like it into that <laughs> I sort of want to like it it probably means very little to anyone else but simple to the new past United takeover right and here's how this because I've gone off on one here I'm probably right? like but because they've came out and said very very little team Joshua and team Earth like usually there's an excuse Say, for example, oh Christ, who was it the other week? Oh, Jordan Gill came up. I had food poisoning. I was ill the week before. I didn't mention it then, but oh, actually, sorry, I had food poisoning. I wasn't well. Like, okay, right, there's your excuse. There's your reason. Excuse or reason, call it what you want, right? But Joshua and Hearn, still a week later, who are the mouthpieces of that? Do you know what I mean? That operation. Uh, Joshua the fighter, Hearn the promoter. That's who you want to hear for. Have not said a thing. They've never once. You know, it's, 
another not going to say he got chinned and sparring, right? But that, that's another one. I had that on my list of excuses. You know, he's had a poor training camp and that. They've never came out and said, they, you know, they, they refuted the pre fight panic attack. You know, there was, there was no mention of the gum shield that apparently was to do with the loosening his, wake his jaw up or something. Like, you, and it's, I guess it's refreshing in a way, but you always, when a big fighter or a favourite gets beat, there's, oh, how do you feel like that? You know, this was off, I had a, my camp was riddled with injuries, but I thought I could do the job, blah, blah, blah. But this time, they haven't said a word. So and it's, it's they, interesting your take on that, because you used the word refreshing earlier, and normally you would say, oh, well, it's actually, it's refreshing right. that a fighter's not making excuses, they're not coming yeah. up with all this sort of bullshit for want so of a better that, frame. But this time, it feels like people really want to hear something of, like, I think part of that mm -hmm. is because of how well Joshua is being built. Yeah. And a lot of the people that are trying to pick holes in it and thing up all this are the ones that maybe weren't necessarily the boxing fans to start yeah. with, but they've got more into the sport or got become involved in the sport because of Joshua. It just and feels like to, seeing this, yeah. like to see this person that we've been told is almost invincible and he's, he's the best in the world, he's going to smash yeah. Wilder, he'd smash Fury, all these heavyweights are running scared. Yeah, I mean, Point. To see right? him get absolutely battered yeah. in the way that he did, because it wasn't a what lucky punch, it no, wasn't it like a total a, a out of the blue, it was a systematic breakdown he over seven rounds. He could have maybe continued. Some people said, you know what I mean? Like, was that? But well, he didn't anyway. But I, I'm thinking the more they don't say anything, the more it's went on. People are still digging. So he was alright. They say, look at him. What was his dad? Why was his dad shouting? Was good. What's like? This still feels that. And you thought it might have came out. So why do you think then that maybe they haven't come out and just said something and put it right? I don't know. Like, is it because if it's something like is it this him getting knocked out in sparring or the panic yeah. attack or something yeah. like that, there's medical grounds there that maybe. maybe he shouldn't have been in the ring? Maybe. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that to give him an excuse. I'm just saying if something's gone wrong like that, they're not going to... Want that to come out where they're not going to want to come out and admit that because then there's a whole load of stuff that then falls on top. So I like I was saying, um, I think the longer the week's gone on and the more they haven't said anything, I think people are still digging deep, waiting for some sort of conspiracy theory or something wasn't right. But like you say, at the same time, if they do come out and say he had a poor training camp, he's been you know knocked down his sparring, or he had a panic attack, it it even it, it adds to the sort of the chinks that are now already in his armour like you know if, if Joshua was to come out and says oh yeah I had a pre-fight panic attack before <laughs> do you know what I mean and not that there's anything wrong with that in these days of mental health openness but it sort of it makes him look even more more vulnerable less of a champion now than he already is do you know what I mean like people think oh that's not the AJ that was built up this wrecking machine and perfect specimen aid. you know if they come out and say oh he's, he's really so, like like you know, he's, he's, human. he's a, you know, if, if they did say that or, you know, he was, you know, he was in a bit of a wobble in the changing rooms or he, he's gassed for whatever reason. And, and if people come out and admit that, then it sort of, I don't know, it, it, again, lessens the image. But I guess by just saying, you know, Ruiz was the man, Ruiz was the man and he was his night, you know, he deserves it. It plays along with, you know, stay humble and, you know, like it does, it's it, that. It, it, it carries that sort of manufactured image on, which... As a good guy, the humble guy. I know a lot of people yeah. get irked by that because they feel there's something sort of bubbling underneath yeah, they do, the, right? the real Anthony Joshua. Yeah. And, like, as I say, so far they've had, they've had no excuses. But even that, and just sort of how well he's taken defeat, yeah. has led to a lot of questions and a lot of people worrying almost about... Is what he, he has is left he, is he really that bothered is it a man that's like, still has he got to the point where has he got any love for the game left is yeah, it just he, money now there was or? a few hints wasn't it like was it the Klitschko fight and he said oh if I get into any wars like that again like yeah. I can't afford too many like that type thing aye, and, that's right, aye. and it's like, as I say that there are the, a lot of questions have been raised and I think a lot of it comes from yes we've seen chinks in Joshua's armour before but we haven't seen them yeah. highlighted and for that Word exposed yeah. to this degree before he's still managed to get through things. He's he's looked laboured, he's looked gassed at certain points, but then he's got a second wind or he's been wobbled, but then he's managed to get the guy out of there. And You're right. You're right he's there. always come out on top, and I think when you've got that undefeated fighter and a lot is made of the the O in modern boxing, it's often hard to envisage them 
being beaten into being in bother. Like unless they've scraped through a lot of wins, mm-hmm. and they've shown you know they've they've got lucky on a lot of occasions. You've seen a fight and you think, well, you might have suspicions that they've they've got a weak chin or that they're, they're going to gas or they they're not good technically or whatever it may be. But until you see that in the ring and you see that happen, and yep. you see them lose. It's hard to imagine it happening, in, and I think a lot of boxing fans are in shock that it's happened to Joshua against someone who looks like Ruiz and again just coming on to aesthetics. <laughs> just they looked at Ruiz and it. dismissed him, and then they've seen it. So there has well, to be something wrong. It can't, yeah. it can't just be that Ruiz is outboxed and beaten Joshua. They has to they have to find well, something that's it. No, else that's something under the, the surface. Like you say about aesthetics, people are now saying is Joshua is it just muscle and you know is there nothing underneath that? Is there no gas tank underneath the I think exterior, people have you know? said that before though. Yeah, but Klitschko and it was close. And, I'm like in yeah. the middle of writing a bit on it because there's a lot of other podcasters, there's a lot of people on boxing Twitter and social media that are taking absolute pleasure and genuine mm. joy yeah. in seeing Joshua lose and I sort of try and touch on why that is and because I think it's more an anti match room Anti-anti thing anti match than an anti yeah. Joshua thing. But it's like sticking it to the man sort of thing. Yeah, it? Like, it is. It's that sort of cool to go like, against yeah. the grain and like, like, like rebel you said before against about the, the establishment. Guy, like the guy that stuck his middle finger emoji up at uh, pay per views and it's sort of a bit like Fuck you, Wembley Stadium. Yeah, it is. Cash car and really, all that. You know, you like that the, rebellion side of it. Like seeing the empire crumble, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. And with that, I think they often come across really sort of hate filled, and yeah. the the people within boxing look at them as sort of dismiss them and say, well, actually, like, oh, how can you take joy in another man's failure? Yeah, that means you're uh, unsatisfied in your life and all it. And again, and there's a, a, bit, bit, of truth, a bit pressure side. There's a bit yeah. of truth in both sides of it, but I do often think that a lot of these conspiracy theorists and these rebels and the, the hardcore mm-hmm. anti macho anti hearn side of things, they often um, like belittle their own point because of how badly they go on like that. Yeah, I agree. A lot of them have pointed out at various times in the past that Joshua and his physique are, are going to lead to question. They, yeah. They've had questions over his gas tank. They've criticised this. But because they've picked up on that in his victories, it's not really still gone on and won and blah, 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 blah. And now the Joshua has lost. They've, they're they having their moment to say, mm-hmm. I told you so. Like, And whether you agree with them or not and you agree with that sentiment, like... A lot of for a lot of them, it isn't hindsight. Yeah, they've predicted for a while that Joshua would lose to Wilder, for example, and they're yeah. being proven right. And everyone in the business who's bigged up Joshua and hyped him as this this monster that's going to walk through Wilder, that yeah. all these other heavyweights are avoiding him. They've been proven wrong in this instance, and it is, as you say, a bit of a fingers up, a bit of I told you so to the man. Yeah, that's what it is. It's massively intriguing now, though, because the team Joshua basically left. With no other choice, I guess, than to go for the rematch because, uh, but then if he loses that rematch, then is that the end? Like, is that suddenly the end of Joshua going from the biggest fighter in the country, which he still probably could be even if he lost the rematch? But I mean, like, this image and this brand that's been conjured up to then losing two in the bounce to Andy Ruiz Jr. is just like, you know, losing the ring's gonna hurt your image. Do you know what I mean? It's like, is it all been one massive smoke screen? Is he no good? Do you know what I mean? The questions will come and you're like, Do you know who the similarities are? Pricey Tony uh, Thompson. David Price, yeah. it is. It is, it is. I, 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 I laugh as I'm saying that. Is this his bogeyman that he'll. Like, you know, I like, who knows? I mean, is this. It's really it hard Tom, Tony Thompson. to look at a rematch. Mm-hmm. And even though Joshua will go in his favourite. I'm finding it hard to go in and think, right, well, how is he going to go in and do something different? What's he going to do differently to beat Ruiz? Because I've talked about boxing-wise, that style, and I didn't predict this before the fight, so it's 100% hindsight. Yeah, yeah, same here. But it's hard to see what Joshua can do because between rounds, even after like the first one or two rounds, he was struggling in the corner to know what to do. He couldn't think on his feet, and that's something I picked up on. That's the thing. He's relying on McCracken, Mm -hmm. but... That if you're at the very top uh, level of the sport, surely you should have in your head, right, I've tried this, that's not working, I'm going to try and jab and move or whatever. Yeah. And whether he's capable of doing that so at the highest think, level like, or not, then what did you, you that's know, up for debate. You mentioned his ring walk and you said, in hindsight, because you knew, you know... He just, like, again, I don't know if it was just the mouthpiece and stuff, but he, he didn't look focused, he didn't, he looked nervous, yeah. he looked edgy, 
And again, is you're that, talking about a, um, an 18 stone man or however much he's weighing. If he's nervous, he's got a lot of emotions. Similar to Price, that's going to drain your energy quite and, yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. So whether it's a mental thing or a physical thing, is we, it we don't of, know. But he's, he's for some of, reason that he wasn't able to maintain a good pace, like as good as Ruiz was, mm. you would expect a top class heavyweight, and I'm going to go totally on the other sort of style. But Tyson Fury, and I know it's a lot more natural to him. Yeah. He would have been able to box and move. He boxed and, Ruiz all night. And keep him at that yeah. distance. Whereas AJ doesn't isn't necessarily as light on his feet. No. But you would still imagine that with his significant reach advantage, he could keep a high guard yep. and jab and just literally pepper him with one or two shots, not load up. But he insisted on oh, totally right, getting right. caught in that sort of trying to hook and getting caught in the war and he, he looked, as I said in um but that's what I mean, how... bereft of ideas. Yeah. on how to do it he was asking for that reassurance in between every round like, what do I do what's he going to do and that stri- strikes me more at mentally there was Surely massive that must... amount made of AJ in the corner and Joshua saying like why do I feel like this and a lot has been obviously everyone's jumped on that and a lot has been interpreted as is that why does he feel well, like he's never he's sure those... gassing why he's... does he feel tired why does mm. he feel like he can't get his shots away why does he feel yeah. like Lethargic, he can't, or, he can't like yeah. time Ruiz. He can't land on him. There's all these questions, mm-hmm. and none of them have. They've never all been posed at the same time in the same fight. There's That's, been issues it, in the uh, past of like, oh, he's been caught by Dillian White and wobbled. Yeah, can he get through that? Yes, he got through that. Klitschko, Klitschko dropped through. him. He looked knackered. He re- he got himself back into that fight. Parker, it was a scrappy one. Can he? Out, can he just like be patient and outbox and get mm-hmm. get the win on points? To Cam broke his nose. Can he grit him? Can he grit that out and get the win there? And he's yeah. done that in all of those fights. Like Povetkin had his moments and was poss- potentially beating him at the time of the stoppage. Yeah. And he's got through them. Whereas this one, it's there's that physical yeah. tiredness look to show the mental insecurity possibly. Maybe he's high. That's what it looked like. And again, then being like outworked and outpunched and outlanded, all these sorts of things rolled into one and then like for the rematch is what we're obviously hinting at there but then from a mental point not, of view the rematch the pressure then is going to be absolutely massive oh like, unbelievable like, like, whether it takes place over here um, he's going to be like this returning hometown here and he'll have a more, more support but if he's got any of these doubts will they be mm. magnified by that massive I, stadium I deal touched and, on this the other day you know and when Hearn was talking about the rematch over here in November December people going oh it's got to be Cardiff it's got to be Cardiff I was thinking it wouldn't surprise me one bit if they took it back to the O2, you know, scale it right back down a bit. You know, that sort of was AJ's home. You know what I mean? That was where, before Wembley, that's where, you know, AJ was always at the O2. Almost back to basics. Almost a bit. back to a bit of a basics, I right? To the O2 where he was, you know, comfortable in his earlier days. And I just think, does it need to be a stadium fight in November, December? I don't know. But See, I know it doesn't. O2 it would it? surprise me yeah. if it went to the O2, but you do make a really good point there because... Back to what he knows, back to his comfort. Like Cardiff, it's it's not Wembley, it's not that same prestige. No. So that could be far enough out of the way. It's because of the roof and that's it, isn't it, essentially? But even like that, you're still talking, what, however many thousands that's all like? Yeah. Is it 80,000 there or well, 70, got, whatever? Uh, like, but then money, if you can sell 18,000 at the O2 or, or you can sell 70,000 at Cardiff or something. Exactly. You know and I mean? like, it's obviously pay per view wherever. Yeah. Then it all depends, really on what exactly was stipulated in this rematch because obviously I've read bits about Ruiz demanding 50 million for the rematch mm, and all the rest no. of it but if you go back to Dillian White turning the fight down he didn't want to win and beat Joshua and be tied down for a rematch where Joshua was still getting yeah. the upside of the, the split well, that's it. so have they been a bit maybe negligent with Ruiz and that said there has it. to be a rematch yeah. but not specified everything? I kind of believe that they would be that blase yeah like, you got if you're top... going to put a rematch clause in you're going to specify a few things oh, I, yeah. but it, clearly the venue hasn't because Hearn's come out and said that it's still that's up for debate whether it's Vegas whether it's New York again whether it's America first he said it was going to be over here whether it's over here but that hasn't been sort of but again, a bit nailed. Like, he hasn't come out and said hundred percent where it's going to take place. A bit like the Newcastle United takeover. I'll not believe this until I say date, venue, because uh, pinch of salt. Again, are these things know? not like yeah. not 
put in there because like, it's all very well saying, oh, well, there has to be a rematch. And it's all very well. But if nothing's yeah. been agreed, and this goes back to like Joshua yeah. and Wilder and their negotiations, and it's, if nothing's specified, mm-hmm. they can't then book a venue or say a venue and Ruiz think, well, oh, I have to do that. But if Ruiz is legally obligated to have a rematch, mm-hmm. but there's no money being discussed already, yeah. can Ruiz then say, well, yeah, there'll be a rematch, but I need 50 million? Or it has that already been set? Like, I don't understand. Well, I don't see what, how, which, like, what they've got to play hardball with. And it's all like her saying, we've triggered the rematch clause. That's like Sheikh Khaled saying, I'm buying the club. But well, until in this story, but, do you know like, what I mean? But until oh, we've triggered the clause, you might have it your side. This what Ruiz, I mean, what, what Ruiz could be there? sitting here doing this, and for the benefit of the people listening, I'm sitting sticking my fingers up at Andrew. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, this is what I mean. This is it depends on what's from, actually being put in. At the minute, it's come from one side and one and side I, only. I, a lot of been, a lot of it's been said, but I'd love to know what specifics, and obviously we won't until it's it's signed, sealed, and delivered. My what has foot, actually been yeah. included in this clause because he's triggered it, but it doesn't necessarily the mean they have agreed to it. And Hearns yeah. can't said he wants it. Mm-hmm. Does Joshua? Does, uh, does Joshua? Never mind Ruiz. Does Joshua? Does Ruiz, he... Ruiz could be like, oh yeah, I'll give one of these belts up. It's well, the, 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 the Al the Al Heyman factor. This is the other issue, isn't it? Heyman, Heyman, Heyman would much rather put Ruiz against Wilder and make his own little unified, unified clash. Yeah, he never might get a chance to do this again. He could be frozen out. I guess there's not that much love out there for the Hearns and the Joshuas. WBO call a mandatory. Mm-hmm. The last time this happened, Fury, that, Fury yeah. had all the belts. Mm-hmm. The IBF was the one that stripped him first, yeah. and that's obviously the belt Joshua won. Pulev the the IBF number one contender. He's with probably the, been with a chance at some point. He's waited long enough. I think with the Al Heyman factor and him owning now the, you know, the two two belt holder owning man, promoting man, manager, whatever. A better word, yeah. But, uh, you just think you're gonna get him back over here for? I don't know. I just I thought it made Hearn and Joshua well Hearn look a on the desperate side last week, three days later, we've triggered the rematch. It's like, you fucking need this. You know what I mean? Because without it, you could be frozen out. You well, what be... got me was in the hall, and again, I don't know how, I can't remember, I think it was immediately after the ring, Josh, uh, in the ring, yeah. or not long after, Joshua was talking about, oh, well, the Wilder fight's still massive. And he was still almost talking like he was the champion, like that there are other big fights out there, and he wasn't necessarily bothered about the rematch. And I know... You take whatever the promoters say with a pinch of salt. Yeah. But a lot of their A side draw selling point mm-hmm. was that Joshua held more belts than Wilder. And I know there's other factors involved in that and how mm-hmm. much of a draw Joshua is anyway. But without those belts, yeah. yes, Wilder and Joshua is a good fight and it'll be entertaining and I would like to see it. But my main reason for wanting them to face off and getting so pissed off that they didn't is because that would have been the unification. Now it's not. If if Wilder fights Joshua now, and I'm not saying he's going to next, I don't see him anywhere near doing it. No, no. But if he fights Joshua without any belts, that's just a title defense for Wilder. Yeah, it's yeah, a good title yeah. defense. Oh, it's, it's a big fight. Yeah. It will sell. It's it's all the all these other things. Yeah. But I don't care that Joshua's lost a fight. It's lost some of its appeal because it's not that unification that I wanted to see. Great eye, and that was the main. That was the clamour from the fans. That was the main, and that was the main narrative of Match Room and Joshua. You know, it's all about unified, unified, unified. And now if he it's swerves like, this rematch, and he came out and said the aim's still the same, nothing's changed. It's just a bump in the road, blah blah. But then other people touched on that last week that he did an interview IFL after, and it was all a bit blase. Like, yeah, I've got people to come back, been through bigger shit than this in my life, and you're like, is that just the words of a multi multi millionaire now? who's a bit like. You know what I mean? I don't know. And it all seemed to change. I remember it was like, oh, I just go to Sheffield. I rent this little flat out. It's not. It's basic. I've got one room upstairs. You know what I mean? And like, but then suddenly this whole, I've got Miami now, and it was it, was, it screamed a bit of sort of David Hay sort of belly. You know, when David Hay went off to Miami Beach into this sunny training camp and they had absolutely nothing in the ring and all this and oh, it's good for me body. It's good for this. And you're like, have we? You know what I mean? I don't know. Just is this the man? That's I don't know. But then you see things like people saying. McCracken's got this style that gets British amateurs and so far in the pro game, but then he can't do anything else. And like you said before, Joshua's like, what do I do? What do I do? Is he like a robot? Whereas Fury can obviously think on his feet and it's different. But then again, like you said before, in the longer Fury, Joshua, Wilder, I know Fury, Wilder fought, but continue to ignore each other from this point forward, it's almost like stocks and shares that when Joshua gets beat, 
wireless stocks never been higher at the minute. Oh, especially you know I mean? because of like the his yeah. previous result when he the actually Brazil, Brazil. Brazil. The knockout. Like he smashed him in a round mm-hmm. and I don't believe in these triangle theories. No. But a lot of hype can be made yeah. from the fact that yeah. he's knocked him out in a round and yeah. he took Joshua seven or whatever. Yeah, that's it. So uh, then Joshua had to go and fight Ruiz and, I think and he had to make a statement and whatever and obviously a statement know, has been made, uh-huh. but not the one that wanted. No. So And I think well and then Fury again, there's you say the theory, Joshua's down well Fury boxes lugs off all night. You know, that's the easiest one for people to say, and it's like the winners are the other guys that also aren't Ruiz is a winner, but the guys that aren't fighting Joshua are winning at the same time because people, especially with Wilder now, it was he was almost a bit of a joke and like, oh I see these little chicken legs, all he can do is punch. He's got no skills in that, and it's like, actually, that Breezy will not you know, and the Fury put downs in that people are like that's all he actually needs. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, it doesn't it's scary. Like, it doesn't need. He doesn't need. He technically good at all because could be in. That is but just like the fight, yeah. He could be behind yeah. over twelve rounds, and still like he was obviously yeah. a second away or two from winning that by knockout. Like, he's, he's gone from what I thought was a bit. Got to go thirty six yeah. minutes and not get tagged by him to, to this, basically beat him. This country's perception of him seemed to go from like, you know. Like I said, oh, a bit of a joke. He's, oh, them stupid windmill gifts, and he's, yeah. he's for the benefit of the people listening. I'm now swinging away with my arms. <laughs> Good windmill, that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And oh, his, his legs don't suit his body, and all he's got in this, like, he's useless, man. He's useless. To now, his last two fights, Fury, he's, he came out as the Fury fight was a bit of a winner, if that makes sense, because he didn't actually get beat technically, and he showed on the result, and he showed that he can put him down. And then I the Brazil one on the back of that, it's like people are like. He's suddenly gone from a joke figure to people's perception he's the baddest man on the planet. And you're like, and Joshua going down, it's like, you know. I mentioned to you, and I think a few of the lads when we were talking about it, like my perception and predictions for mm. those three meeting yeah. hasn't really changed. No. Like, I would fear, I would favour Fury to outbox both of the other two. Yeah. Like, I believe he did with Wilder. Who could also get put in his arms. He's vulnerable, so yeah. he can get clipped, which adds a bit of intrigue to those fights. And Wilder Joshua is like that sort of more of a 50-50 in the sense of they can both hurt each other. Yeah. I think now, because of seeing Joshua wobble, wobble uh, and against struggle... Against lesser and fighters. You think if, if Wilder lands... Wilder, uh, if he lands, will he recover? That's it. And Joshua's a bit more static than Fury, so I think he's more suited... Wilder's more suited to fighting Joshua than he was Fury. Yeah. Same with Joshua and Wilder. I think Wilder is a... But not easier, no, no, a better suited opponent to Joshua than yeah. Fury would be, and it's a, it is that blend of styles. Right. But again, until we see them do it, and you've got to chuck, you've got, you've got to put Ruiz in that mix you have now, to as now. Well. it's no longer like, the big three, it's a big like, four. Would, I guess, would no? Ruiz stand a good chance yeah. against Wilder? Like, obviously, he's up off Joshua. Could he take Wilder's power like he took Joshua's? No. Like, if he gets dropped against Wilder like he did against Joshua, does yeah. he get up and do the same? Is he capable of pressuring Wilder and forcing him back like he did Joshua? There's a good little mix now with 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 Ruiz in there as well. Oh, you're, you're totally right. There. Obviously, it's Fury Wilder apparently is that's it. sealed for the and next it, one. It, isn't it? Minute, Ruiz holds all the cards. I guess he's the you know what I mean. He's in a position that was unfathomable. Really, like even you know, he wasn't meant to have to fight. He was a replacement. It's it's it's, it's incredible. Really, like. I don't know, he's benefited from Miller's stupidity, really, and he's he's, he's also in. benefited from. And I said this uh, to um. It was Tom Gray from Ring Magazine was commenting on with this with someone, and he was basically saying that like Ruiz has got lucky in the sense of like and he was talking about how Josh Ruiz owes Joshua a rematch in the UK and stuff, which I disagreed with respectfully. Yeah. Like, I'm a big fan of Tom's work and I like, love the Ring uh, Magazine and all the rest of it. But what I said was that yeah, Ruiz has got lucky in the sense of other people have turned that fight down. Mm-hmm. So you look, we'll talk about Dillian White earlier. Ortiz wanted nothing to do with it. He wanted silly money. Um, who else was there? Kaunaki. Michael Hunter got mentioned. As Michael well. Hunter was in the mix. And all these fighters have, for whatever reason, decided, no, like, not this time, we can't take that on short notice. Yeah. Ruiz has stood up, and as I say, he's, he hasn't frozen. We he, he's, he's, earlier. He's, he's, he's given it his all, maybe because of his late notice. It's fascinating he's now just because... Gone, it's it's changed his life. Yeah, and it's sort of turned the division on its head as well. Like, it's a bit like, whoa. It's a bit How many like, times have we talked uh-huh. about that there's a top three? Mm-hmm. And now suddenly, yeah. one of those three yeah. is you used the word vulnerable. Yeah. And other fighter, until you might, will be licking his lips at the chance of a Joshua rematch more so well, than he it. previously was, I think. And then you've got to look at, you've got to look at 
Usyk coming up. Usyk and Machu have now got Gale Parker. Fancy that. They've got Parker. They've got British. They've got you know what I mean. There's Martin McCauley. Like Macaulay's who kicked about, previously, right? and I'm I'm not even semi joking mentioning but, him there. Yeah. He's not coming off a good win. Like. But match room alone. Put him in with uh, some of them and like match room alone now. Match room disown we call them. They've got Parker, Bradish, Usyk, uh Hergov- Hergovic. I did not pray this, I mean Gassi, I'm sorry. Uh, get me, I'm getting me fellas mixed up. mixed up. Hergovic, Philip Hergovic, you know what I mean? He's signed over to them now. Like, but their you've still got Chisora kicking about, you've got White, you've got loads their of names now. Their issue is what you said, yeah. where are the belts now? Like, mm. you've got all these good fighters and good fights they can make, Push, but if the world yeah. title's not on the line, yeah. are they going to be willing to do that? Are we going to see these four or five heavyweights yeah, yeah, right. going um, four or five different Michael, routes. I'm sure, is Michael Hunter saying he'd be with the zone? I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah, that's probably why he got linked. Yeah, I know it? he's on the smaller side, but it's an option, isn't it? But either it's, it's mental, and then over here you've got your, your Du Bois, your Gorman's, your Joyce's. Do you know that? It's, Joe Joyce's. Joe Joyce's, Joyce, yeah, it's all happening now. Um, right, so it's, it's mad, right? Um, it, it's sort of turned around, and it turned the vision on its head a bit, and I just, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens, whether and what happens at this point? It's huh? funny because if Joshua had won and while I was fighting Ortiz, I would still be like, well, what's the point in this fight? Like, this isn't like, whereas now, because yeah. Joshua's not now Ortiz breathing not down Wilder's out. neck, you think, well, actually, Wilder Ortiz, if yeah. we couldn't fight the first one, it's not a bad rematch. I get if, Fu- if Fury beat Schwartz and then Wilder and Fury face off again, you, do, you don't mind it as much. It's opened no, the division up totally. It has. It's just, Turned well, it on its head, like you mentioned earlier. I also get the impression that people like Wilder's team and Fury's team and that wouldn't hesitate two seconds to stick the fingers up if Hearn and Joshua came call him saying, "Oh, like you know." Oh, I do. Well, I definitely well, agree. You, on your of bike. Their, um, you know what I mean? I don't think there'll be much love in the division for for those lot. And never, part of the appeal uh, for them to are fighting each other mm-hmm. is, as you say, sticking your fingers up at match room. Uh, I, I think it is. Getting on to like we've talked about the zone and Hearn and and Joshua, but. Just getting on to the way Hearn has, has gone about his business with America. Yeah. It's it, odd. He's alienated some of the other big players. Yeah. And I think that's maybe a bit of arrogance on their part because they've obviously thought they've sewn up the UK market and then gone yeah. off to America and sort of tried to do the same. I it, And maybe underestimated the power of Heyman and, and, and top rank with Bob Arum. It's never truly lived up to you know, this billion dollar deal, oh, I've come for you, America, and that, it's sort of, nothing's really changed, does that make sense? No, it hasn't, there's, there's a, a few, few Brits, shows in America, yeah, but, a few Brits going over to get beat, and a few, you know, are we fights getting made, and it's just, doesn't feel like, it hasn't revolutionised American boxing by any, it's, no, and it hasn't, know, and I we think, get to watch more fights now over here, and there's always, there's something on most weekends, but I think, one. like, in a way, they've played the short term game, because yeah. obviously, they've needed some big names, to like, to yeah. launch it and to launch the whole disowned mm-hmm. product and things, but the fighters they've sort of got as those big names, they haven't been able to no. just go over and like I think they maybe believed just pull one of the who do you think best like, names who do you over. think are like the main winners from this like boxing wise from this disowned deal, Andrade maybe? Andrade and Danny he's, Jacobs are the two I'm thinking Andrade, of Andrade because he's fought more in the and last two years now or yeah than he has in the last five put together that have sort of been on the outskirts yeah. of the big fights they've had yeah. big fights in the past uh, but they're not from what yeah. I know they're not these household names and no. amazing like the big names in American boxing yeah I agree yeah. so he's sort of well think right well they're, they're good enough to headline a show yep. I can get them for like a certain amount of money I'm probably paying them more than what they've made previously but mm-hmm. it's not a massive dint in my budget uh, he's quite active now and Roddy actually he's fighting against soon and he against was the next weekend against and, he, and he's good and like, obviously he could have been fighting Billy Joe Saunders that's gone yeah. and south but True. there's these sorts of fighters whose bank accounts will be boosted and Tevin they're, they're more active and Tevin yeah, Farmer, Tevin yeah. Farmer Devin Haney there's these yeah. ones now I think star. Haney he could build and I think maybe Rather than trying to go over and ruffle feathers of Aram and, and yeah. pissing off Al Heyman and like the way he's gone over, yes, that's Eddie Hearn and Matt mm-hmm. Jones. Uh, it's and it's just, you know what I mean? He's not going to go yeah. over and there be be happy to be second fiddle, but maybe just walk it before he sort of ran over there. Yeah, and it's easy for me to sit here and say, but like invested in the, maybe a few prospects, a few of these, and, and built them up. Maybe put on a few smaller sort of shows Aye, maybe in America so. first, yeah, yeah. and then got them to a higher level. 
Ah, you're right. No, that's a good point. It's I. It is an interesting one, and like you said, it. I guess it has alienated a few people, and people over here think you know he gets criticism. Always took his eye off a UK martyr, and he's sending fighters over to get beaten. Ah, oh, this we've been through this a million times. There's pros and cons. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you're Tommy Coyle, you're not going to say no to the Algeria fight in Madison Square Garden. No, of course. Do you know what I mean? It's like, but like as well. I think it works both ways in the sense of, like, it's like that chicken and the egg situation. Mm-hmm. What came first? Did Tommy Coyle's desire to end his career fighting in America, yeah. was that his lifelong dream? As though no, sort of I, not alluded know, to I, in as many words, but, oh, yeah, it's a massive opportunity, blah, blah, blah. Would that have even entered his head if Hearn hadn't had this American platform? Yeah, maybe not, so I know I. It suddenly, well, actually, I can go and fight in America. That's his second fight so in America, hadn't he? Didn't that's he a f- brilliant opportunity. Did he fight before that again? Oh. Hasn't he had a couple? I didn't he, he beat fight? someone on points. Previously, oh, I did. I didn't remember who it was. It, it wasn't someone of his. No, I no, it wasn't a particularly good opponent. It was a good fight. It was yeah, a good right fight. It was a good fight. I, I can't but then, remember like, his name now. Then, as mm. you say, the Algeria fight. It's like other than a bit of prestige of MSG and a good payday. Yeah. Like, but again, Tommy Coyle. Like, mm. What else is he going to get? He's not going to challenge for world titles. He's not going to get. You know what I mean? He's he's been at British level. He's been at Commonwealth level. Well, that's it. And he's he's not how long has he got? Maybe his last fight, maybe a couple of others. Why not take that fight against Algeria? And again, as you say, it's I from guess a, it a negative point yeah. of view. You can say to him putting his sort of British lads to the to the fodder, but from a woman's over as fodder. from a female point of view, I guess Katie Taylor's been a winner of this deal. You know, she's fighting and big on the cards and she's doing all of herself but did you watch that fight because I still haven't seen it. I did. It was a bit of a war. I couldn't. I was hungover. I couldn't really be asked to score it in any way. I just. Just two going hell for leather, basically, and I just thought the interesting thing from I what I've read about it is uh, how many like of the Sky Brigades, Froch, Adam Smith, yeah. and a few others gave it to Pursuit. Pursuit, uh, Katie Taylor didn't look like delighted. She was a bit sheepish when she won. It didn't scream the reaction of someone who's just became undisputed. It was like sort of yes, you know, get it. Well, the fact Pursuit, she's Pursuit, for the rematch. Pursuit went out the ring in tears, and it was just a bit like. I don't know, it was a bit, mm, you got the point. It could have went either way, but it felt a bit flat that, you know, maybe Imagine that hadn't gone the way it had lost on most the same card. Oh, that's it. it. It made me think, watching that undercard, it just made us think, you know, match room had a, a rough time of late, but then thank God they still do have fighters, you know, like Buatti and Callum Smith, two genuine well, stars. Well, this is it. We've and, said you know, they've still got some already, really good fighters. About, like, to, how the depth isn't yeah. what it was no, it's not, no. and they don't have as many household names I think that's reflected in that July the 6th show they've just put together for Manchester like Macaulay um, is it Jack Massey I can't remember who Macaulay's fighting on it now and, and Fitzgerald Brian Rose and like a half Manchester arena they shortened the arena off from that and it was a bit like pff, I don't know it just again not look great on paper not terrible but not it's not a, like well it's not terrible. It's not terrible. It's just like I don't know. You didn't have to do that, you know. You could have done that at Victoria Warehouse. Do you know what I mean? Like Manchester Arena, even half of it. It's a twenty odd thousand arena. It's a big place to build. Do you know what I mean? It's like I don't know. Rumours that Richard might get added on that. I was assuming Richard and Robbie Davis might have been towards that, but from what you hear about that fight, that I'm not so sure it'll happen or not. I don't know. But you just think, oh, it didn't look great written written down like it just looked like a date filler again do you know what I mean like well we were talking about earlier obviously the Dillian White one and we're saying there's some good fights on there but the three we mentioned and um, it's uh, Richard Riakpo's fight and Chris Billum Smith for some like WBA strap I, so yeah yeah that's a good there's one only four, f- there are only four fights announced for that one at the moment ah, there is. so again it's not ah, like, it's not like it's obviously it's not miles away yeah. there's, but there's enough time to add other fights but the nearer you get to the date the less likely any sort of meaningful fights get added on. I thought the yeah the idea was to bring Boachi straight from that undercard over the headline of Manchester one, but then I don't know. It looks like Coley's on there, so I don't know. I see uh, Morris Hooker and Ramirez have just been uh, announced um, July twenty seventh. So that's another disown date again. Another winner, probably someone like Mo Hooker who yeah. wasn't really signed to anyone. Came over here, beat Terry Flanagan. Now, Bit of a name for himself. I, and he, you know, now he's got a deal that he probably didn't have before that. So I'm just trying to find these amounts. Yeah, amount. it's it's hard because there are opportunities for the boxers, but like going right back to what we were talking about at the start, these opportunities for certain levels of boxers don't always translate into 
amazing quality shows for the fans. Yeah. Like you've got these boxers who we don't begrudge getting these good opportunities and these big paydays, but then it's not a GoFundMe page. No, it's, it's not, not like no, no, I... I'm not you know what I mean? If the if the boxers set those up and all boxing was free, I wouldn't mind paying that directly to the boxers and chipping yeah. in and say, right, I'm gonna give you a bit of money for you putting on like I I like you as a boxer type thing, I'm gonna yeah. whack you twenty quid or whatever. But it, that's not the way it works mm. for me. I, I again like saying Dillian White. Like, oh well, to get Dillian White the Parker fight, it had to be pay per view. And I was like, well, yeah, that's fine. That was a good fight. I think the, but the undercard that... needs to be value for me. I can't uh, just say like I can't as a, as a customer. Yeah. And this is the problem. I'm like I'm a boxing fan and a fan of boxing, but again, I'm also a customer of Sky. I there think... needs to be a sort of common ground somewhere. I can't just they can't be relying on me paying for a product that I don't think's worth it just because I want to see the boxer get a good payday and turn safe to his family or whatever and or I be looked after. The one about the Manchester one that I was talking about there for the 6th of July, it was just a bit... It was announced pretty, like, relatively short notice, you know what I mean? It's sort of... Yeah, it was. Early to mid-June now and you're like, you just announced the Manchester Eden show. You've got, like, you've got a Coley, uh Jack Massey for the British and Commonwealth Cruiserweight. Again, like, all right. Uh, Fitzgerald Rose, Brian Rose on the comeback to him, uh, giving it one last shot for WBA International Super Welterweight title. And you've got at the minute, you've got Felix. Is that down as the main event? A Coley's the down for the main event. Uh-huh. And you've got uh, Felix Cash against Jack Cullen for the uh, Commonwealth Middleweight title. So there's more fights to be announced. Wouldn't surprise me if Ritson was maybe on there. Don't know whether that'll be See, against... again, you've got a good blend of 50 50 fights there. Yeah, it's not bad. And it though. seems as though. To me, that like Matchroom are almost in that position where they're changing that model because they never used to yeah. build their cards around fights like that. No, they didn't. But and I'm not saying it was a fifty-fifty, but like Boatsy Conmo that we were at at the Copper Box. Yeah, decent. It was uh, like on paper we we yeah. strongly favoured Boatsy, but no. it was like a, both had a decent winning record. They both, as professionals, at least fought to a similar level and. You don't mind that necessarily. No, you in terms don't. Of a fight. Like it's a it's a winning record. It's an opponent coming to win. Like Conroy, it does feel like the scale came of, to win yeah. and obviously didn't do so, and it went the way most people predicted. But these sort of nip and tuck ones, I I I really look forward to the if we do a podcast before those shows, yeah. trying to predict a winner and break those fights down. It's not like. No, and it's I, just a a home fight and an away fight, which match you. And I maybe don't been mind it because of. it. And it does take a bit getting used to, I think, because it's the model has sort of moved on a bit, and it's I think because these, they don't have those big this, names. That's it. There's newer names coming through now, and Manchester, you know, it's not just going to be synonymous with like Crawler and Quig anymore. Like, exactly. Where is, where is Quig? What's he doing? He's gone missing somewhere in America. Well, he's linked <laughs> with, like, obviously, four Valdez, hasn't he? And yeah. he's, he's been linked with a few opponents and things. Four of them Monte Carlo shows, Matt, didn't he? He's just gone a bit off the radar a bit. Like, I don't know, anyhow. That's. Not your point. Your point was like <laughs> you gotta get like new names now, and like you know, and people might look at that and think, "Oh, it looks a bit like a next gen show." It's like these are the you know, you know, people like a Coley and that with this American thing going on, are they gonna they're the people that will step up over here now and, and highlight and headline these regular Sky Sports shows, and you know, Fitzgerald's put himself in a new great position now after beating Fowler. You know, maybe that'll happen later in the year. Again, yeah, I think, well, I think he'll. he'll too. Benefit from that, and obviously, there's talk of him and Cheeseman for the British. Ah, uh, Cheeseman's, from Cheeseman's on his way back, aye. he's on his comeback trail. I think because a few of these boxers have lost, yeah, it's derailed their careers, but obviously, it's stalled that match of momentum as well. Yeah, and you've hit the nail on the head saying that they don't have a Manchester and a fighter synonymous with Manchester and no. Quella, who's a world ta- no, world champion, know. or a, obviously, he's now a former world champion. But Jesus, no. It wouldn't. You couldn't necessarily have him headlining every fight he's in because no, he's no, not right. at that level yeah, where right. he's fighting for his world title every yeah, time. We've got a few local lads. The same with Kel Brook. Obviously, he hasn't fought in however no, how long, and you don't have that. Where is he? You don't have that, that star he? name, that headline name for every area or every yeah. region in the in the country. Rich. Jordan Gill was another one that, that was building him into uh-huh. even through the next gen level. Ritson, okay. He was telling the press on Ritson there, Cheeseman in London. That was the model for some time. Do you know what I mean? That was the you know what I mean? And they they mentioned something with uh, well, they don't readily have all they don't readily have a champion at a high level no. for each region now so that there's going they to don't, be I, and that was the match we model for a while you know it was Campbell and Coyle and Hull you know what I mean it was Fortune Nottingham and you, were, you could 
you know, and I know there's still Northwestern lads on that one the card, you know, Fitzgerald and Rose and that who I mentioned there. I don't know where Massey's from, you know, if you're from those parts, who knows? <laughs> like, you know, I and it's it's sort of it feels like when they do build a bit of momentum up and this is boxing, you know, they can quickly like Jordan Gill, like you mentioned there, got beaten. It's like, oh, there's there's no opportunity missed. Really. And you know what? Mm-hmm. If, like, again, I might be proven wrong with this, but it'd be interesting to see during that matchroom run from where Hearn first came into sport and prize yeah. fighter and a few fighters going away from home, blah, blah, blah. How many home headliners lost their fights in a two mm. or three year period? Yeah. I bet there wouldn't have been many. No, not many, And no. then that obviously that led itself to a lot of the matchroom lads getting the world titles yeah. or being in big fights mm-hmm. and building that momentum. Whereas now, it just seems like matchroom as a stable haven't been able to quite... Nail something down, bit, right? like get a run going. Yeah, there's a, right. someone loses here and there, and there's quite a few Either lost. And Cheeseman, Ritson, Gill, you know, who are the trying to mold into these next new breed of matchroom home UK headline Sky Sports fight night and it fighters. Hasn't quite worked just out. Just getting a little, and I bet you like you're saying now, it's you know, it's I guess it's up to people like Boachi, a Coley. Fowler to come back. Fowler's, Fowler's on that show, by the way. He's on that. Yeah, he's, so, that's when he's on the comeback there as well. Like. I'm sure if he wins and Fitzgerald wins, it'll be the main. Oh, it's an easy one, right? <laughs> no, easy mean, one to make. There's still some boxing coming up, you know, in the next few weeks as well, which is worth getting. I mean, you touched on Gorman Dubois. You mentioned Gorman Dubois. Gorman Dubois. Dubois. Right, like, July, that's what I didn't believe would happen. July 13th, with the added bonus of Joyce Jennings on the other card as well. I have seen the lads last week. I was like, it, it actually surprised me that... Frank hasn't tried to make that some sort of pay per view. I was just I, like, honestly, I thought you know, the same I, this morning. I thought, I, honestly, it's Gorman, surprised. Like, this is it, Gorman and Dubois. And uh-huh. You look at their purses, what they've had so far, it probably doesn't justify it. But no, you're right. <laughs> this is the point we're at where we're. This being, is where we're this is generally surprised. Down. Is that so Dubois it's Gorman? It's not possibly surprised that that's not on box office. It's mad. It's mad. It's a very yeah, interesting fight because it's. I guess it's a mini Joshua versus a mini Fury. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? In that sort yeah, of like, mostly aesthetic against the sort of. Maybe not so mostly Unfancy, fast hands, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like boxer, yeah. few two random mates of mine who I never really talk boxing with have met, have sort of picked up on this Gorman uh, social media video that's going around, and it's just one from BT Sports. So I mean, just saying, is this the fastest heavyweight in the UK? Yeah. And they're like, who's he? I've heard him, Steve. So you have to give them the rundown of who Gorman is, and you know, and like, this is nice. Well, isn't it good though? That's actually like right? starting to transcend a bit. Aye, right, it's a bit. Fact, this is what we wanted initially yeah. when BT came and. Came on board. People were like, oh, I've never heard of him. I'm like, oh, I, like you know, nice. it's mad. I just it surprises. I was like, uh, just people asking for insight about who Nathan Gorman is. But I am looking forward to that 13th of July. Um, you got Warrington Galahad coming up next week as well. Thoughts on that? We might as well have a look ahead to that since it's next weekend. Um, I will. will I. Um, I've told you this before, but I've, I've underestimated Warrington too many times in the past to do it on this fight. So I firmly believe that. I don't know. I think Galahad's a fighter. That he's a good fighter, but. He goes under the radar a bit. I know he had his drugs ban and stuff. I just I haven't seen enough of him to be like, wow, he's good. Like, and maybe this is his coming of age fight. I don't know. But I just think, I don't know. I just think Warren will have too much room in Leeds. Too, too, just too much going forward for him and coming forward, charging him down. And I just think he could, I don't think he'll stop because I don't think he'll stop anyone. But I don't know. I just think if he fights with that tenacity and that ferocity and pace that he did against like your Phantoms and your Selby and that, and doesn't give him a second, I think, I think he'd be too relentless for him. I think there's any danger of um, not having that same ferocity and relentlessness because of the who it is. is. Uh, like the fact that he's fought Selby and he's in uh, Ellen Road. And maybe he's fought the big name uh, of Frampton and possibly. But is it a step down possibly to those two? <gasps> maybe he's but. It's hard because like Warren's resume is pretty decent. Like anyone that's been Phantom Selby is like, yeah, I still don't know if he's like generally world class or if he's just caught people at a good time. I don't know. And you just think it's a Saturday night in Leeds, that place will be absolutely bouncing. Like I don't is know it what a genuine bit of needle there. A as bit well, of Yorkshire needle, a bit of Leeds Sheffield. Oh, okay. You know, a few ver- <laughs> uh, a few you know, a few verbals going round and I don't know, I just I It'd be a kick in the teeth, like you say, if you, if you beat Warrington and Selby and get beat up Galahad. Like, no disrespect to Galahad, good fighter in that, but I don't know. I'm sure he comes into a live fight. Like, it's is it a 50 50? I don't know, but I do favour Warrington just because I've seen more of him in recent times. Like, 
I haven't seen enough of Galahad, and when I do see him, he doesn't really fight anyone amazing. So, like, I cannot really tell you how good he still is after he's, he's probably had over 20 fights, hasn't he? Oh, he's like, yeah. And you just think, he's always been on that fringe for me, and I've never, like, still don't think he's really had that breakout fight yet, Galahad. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, he hasn't, and he I mean, agree with you. In the, <laughs> I've written Josh off before. Like, me I've, too, not, not now we've written them off, but. Not written them off, but. Backed I, against them and picked against no. them. Um, but. So I'm not going to do that. And I do think Warrington will win, as you say, on points. I don't know how comfortable it'll be. Um, I do think Galahad's style won't particularly make Warrington look good. Yeah. In the sense, I think Selby, I picked him to outbox Warrington. I thought he'd be on the back foot. He'd be too clever. He'd be too cute. I think Galahad will be similar. <coughs> um, what he's got going from, obviously, he's a bit younger than, than Selby. Selby's struggled at the weight. Galahad's come up from Super Bantam, so there won't be that there. Mm. I think he'll be fresh enough and fit enough to, to do the 12 at a good pace. I just think that as the away fighter, anything remotely close will go to Warrington. And, and I'm with not, a few matchroom links for them well, as well. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not predicting that it'll be like a robbery by any means. No, no. I just think it'll be quite close. I don't think there'll be a lot in a lot of the rounds. And I think Warrington coming forward and his aggressive yeah. style will maybe get him a few of those close rounds, get him the benefit of the doubt. But, like, from Galahad point of view, I mean, I remember watching him on Channel 5, like, several yeah, times. He Channel 5, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. I guess I said he hadn't had like a breakout fight before, but I know that he That was, like, be... British level, and he was sort of really... Is that his best win? Touted anyone, and, but, I don't know. Tout, like, touted yeah. and tipped to go on to world level, and obviously, I know, as yeah, you say, he's had the, the drugs ban, which he's taught him to yeah. his career. He's managed to sort of get this matchroom link through the, the Ingle gym and the Ingle gym kept, uh, kept, kept going sort of got himself never been into, any got himself into the mandatory uh, position so from that point of view you can't really knock him and it's one of those <laughs> sorts of fighters that we were talking about earlier in the sense of he's unbeaten he hasn't done anything particularly wrong there's never I think been he's any... fought quite to the level of his opponents yeah, sometimes yeah, agree, which yeah. Yeah. hasn't really done him any favours in attracting fans he's very patient, very slick, very skilled, not necessarily going to go for the knockout. And again, on that sort of what we would call the eye test, he's not the most exciting of fighters, no. but he's definitely got the skills and the, the technical ability to box at the highest level. Never it's just seen... whether that'll be enough to mm. to dictate and Against to, like, won't to really dominate the fight, which I think you'll have to. There's never been some a big push, really, to make him like a matchroom headline fit, like we said before, like there's never been like I don't think no one's ever really hung the hat on him and be like, right, you know, you're I don't know, I just a bit lost with him, mate. Galahad, yeah, a few like undercards and yeah, undercards, yeah, and he's just he's kicking about. Huh? As I, I said, almost seems like a favourite to the Ingles, and like, but what a chance this is, so that, you know what I mean? Thing. But yeah, imagine yeah. he goes and gets that world title suddenly. Know, right? Suddenly he's a star. He's headliner right? in Sheffield. He's, yeah. He's that commodity that Matchroom have been yeah. after. And yeah, I yeah, totally agree. Yeah. He's a mandatory challenger, so there's no rematch necessarily. No. And Dale Warrington train, you know, it just never showed any signs of slowing down at well, the minute. He's, he's you know one of the few has gone the other way, hasn't he? He's gone uh, from Matchroom. From Matchroom, and, right. and kicked on and really yeah. pushed on. Like, I have mean, mentioned that. this before, would he want him in his state? But you know what I mean? Nah, if he'd known. What he knows ah, now, it's an interesting one. Like you hear different rumours of why he left and stuff, and you know, you heard ah, the one I heard was that I think it was oh, I can't, actually, I shouldn't say because I don't know which way around it was. Go I on. heard that Hearn was trying to make the difficult fights, and it was the Warrington camp saying, No, we're not not yet. And, and I guess that's where people get the impression from saying, Oh, well, he chose Warrington and Selby, he chose Fanton and Selby at good times, and you know, when they're on the, on the decrease in that, but I don't know, it's a pinch of salt, isn't it? He still fought them. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, like well, we talked about two, this in the previous still good ones bins, with isn't the, it? the likes of De Gale and, and Selby fight, losing yeah. Frampton, obviously like Groves losing recently. The, these fighters, they, they do come in the, 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 the they come to that age where yes, you might not have beat them in their prime, but no, it's might, not Warren's no. fault that no, he's fought not, the money no. has. He he was the underdog going into both of those, regardless of their age and wear and tear and all the rest of it. And he's 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 done the job on both of them. So. I'm generally coming round, mm. and all the no, time same. I've come round to be a really big fan of him. I kind of bring myself not to, you know, fancy him. I think he's an odds-on favourite of the book. He's three to one on was the last I seen. I don't know. I haven't looked to be honest. I have to I think uh, investigate or BNC's betting corner. BNC's betting corner. I just want him to hold, and not that I don't know if he listens to this or if he listens all the way through. But I big up, <laughs> big up our friend Scott Norman, who for the last God must be about eight weeks now is he's written an article for us every week. Just 
looking for a bit of value and from a better angle than that. And he's, he even did one this week. You know, we had one fight on Golovkin fight, and he did one with Huey Fury fought against Chris Norad. And you know, he's like, I spent four hours reading about this random Canadian. I'm like, well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, do you want to finish off just going back to the big fellas and Tyson Fury this weekend? Uh, Tom Schwartz, BT Sport box office after the Warrington fight. It's which, a bigger fan of Fury I am. Um, I, it's a bit struggling to find the motivation. I think. Do you want to talk Love Island instead? Do you want to talk Tommy Fury? I've never watched it. <laughs> yeah, he's alright, you know, he's suave. Never watched uh, an episode yet. I don't intend to. Probably similar to like. The mannerisms in that. And Peter is just mad and they listen to Peter Fury. Chat with a bird. It's weird. <laughs> anyway, I. Uh, no, but like, Tyson came out and there was a quote I read. I didn't watch the interview, but the quote on it, or like the headline, or yeah. the snippet of it was. Um, if I don't beat Tom Schwartz, I might as well retire. And I couldn't agree with him more. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, well, why fight him? Uh, like, that's I, Yeah, like, again, six like... Six figures to fight Tom again, Schwartz. Again, we always talk right. about this justification and stuff. And as a fighter, I'd be exactly the same. You look now for number one. But as a if fan, this is, it just, I don't have to get interested in uh, that. And I don't it, intend to. Like, I think he'll win. I think... He cruises, he cruises to the points decision doesn't lose a round if he wants to. It's kind of funny he because... him if he puts it on him a bit. Like, it's up to him when he ends it. He's that good. He's that far above uh, Tom Schwartz, I think. I don't know that about Tom Schwartz, but the interesting thing is, is that like, the the what annoyed me is when I got made pay per view right, and they came out initially when the fight was announced. It was a tune up fight. It was an exposure fight before chasing the big fights again. Wilder two, for example, right? And it, it got me thinking that someone last week I read on social media said that was a similar type of fight to what Joshua should have had. I don't mean against his defenses, but in, in maybe. He's, Someone called him inactive, and then so I and then I mentioned that theory online, and someone went, "No, of course he's not inactive. He's been active since two thousand twelve. He's been flogged to death, and blah blah blah." And I was like, "No, you're missing my point." My point was like, "Is two fights a year enough for a big fella like Joshua, who is a bit of a stiff fighter, which have been, you know what I mean? Like, hard to drag that eighteen stone man. You know, does he need a bit loosening up? Is what I'm trying to say." shake the ring rust and I people think, people are now saying should he fight again before Ruiz or should he be fighting maybe one more time a year and is the Fury's got away with having some sort of I know because he hasn't got any belts to defend but he's now got away with fighting this tune up fight warm up fight again before chasing the big fights and is there is there a market or is there an opportunity now for Joshua to maybe have one more fight before who reason maybe fight three times a game rather than two right. I thought about this with Golovkin actually really earlier, because uh, again one, Golovkin's just had one, one last night one of Golovkin's sort of critics was even in his role through the middleweight division mm. he was fighting three or four times a year but he was fighting in fights that you'd expect him to win and expect him to win by a knockout yeah but I think any boxer, and we talked about this at the very start of their careers when they're like prospects on the small hall scene and stuff, you want to get them as many fights as possible in a short amount of time, provided they're not taking damage yeah. and, and struggling or what have you. Yeah. And I think see, that filters all the way through. If you're more active, then you're going to be working on different things. You're going to be fresher. It's going to be more second nature. Mm. And so you were talking about someone like Joshua's physique and his style. Yeah. If he's in the ring more often then yes, he can work on certain things, he can loosen up, say, like, fresh and all the rest of it, but it comes down to the the purses they're earning, like, no, true, you're in a 30 million yeah. fight or whatever, mm. you've got no inclination, I... really, to, uh, to fight another well, fight, squeeze you, something you, else in there. You're right, I know. And then imagine want... the penalties they get if they made Joshua Jennings for the middle. You know what I mean? Is yeah, that take over fight off? Exactly. Like, Joshua Ariola. So you know what I mean? You I get if was, yeah, if he was fighting, as you say, three or four times a week, but then with Joshua, he's pay per view, and he? It's like obviously Fury's on box office uh, and, and got absolute dogs abuse for that because no, no, well that's what annoyed me the the box office being because when they first made the fight, it was you know it was his not introduction to America because he had one against Wilder but that's what they called it they called it the, the yeah. words were an exposure fight or a tune-up fight and it was just that picture's shocking uh, uh, don't mind me well, it, no but it is a tune-up fight it is uh, because but then to make that a 15 quid 16, 19, 19 for whatever that's what I mean it. like Fury's talking down to like Schwartz highlighting the the, the gap in levels yeah. the, that he is below him and Fury should be winning this with ease so then for them to turn around and say, well, I 15 quid to watch this, please. Uh, when it's like, 
potentially a glorified sparring session. I know absolutely not about the undercard either. I no, I don't. I don't. I've got no idea who's on it, uh, which is great for a boxing blog. But, uh, but I, no, but that's what I mean. I, I generally haven't like looked into it and. Obviously, there was a bit more drama about Joshua Ruiz and the build-up because of the Miller debacle and that getting cancelled and rearranged. So I paid a bit more attention yeah. to that. But I, even that, I didn't particularly watch any of the press conferences or the build-up. There's three fights listed. Oh, sorry, yeah, the, it's the the main one is Sullivan Barrera v Jesse Hart, which is not a bad fight. But and the one beneath that is Mikhail Meyer versus Lisbeth Crespo. I've never heard of either of those. Uh, it's hard, female it's, boxers. And then. The time difference doesn't help with pay per views, which we I know we message and talk about. And I'd love to know how many tickets that sold for Fury Shorts in uh, Las Vegas. Like, it's well, it's solely on Fury, isn't it? It's like it's two comeback I fights yeah, prior to Wilder. Do you imagine to turn out to watch Fury? Like, you know what I mean? Well, this like, is what we're going to see, isn't it? This is what the whole he hadn't contingent of it. Fight on Shorts, is he? Do you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know, just a bit, I find the whole thing a bit mad, but uh, I guess the proof's in the pudding to see who he fights after Shorts. You know what I mean? If it if it's a tune up and he, he then goes on to fight Wilder too or someone else. Isn't that the same no. ball? Isn't that like agreed? I don't know what's all this Wilder or T's crack. I I've got no idea. I don't know. Normally after those, it's like yeah, those two it's fights and then it's meant to be right. early next year, I think. But, but then, if this was the colour of his new ESPN deal or whatever, then. Is it, oh, maybe yeah, the ESPN. Like, so ESPN. So this is the, this is the drawback of the fighters getting that financial security. As I said, it, yeah. it doesn't agree with what the fans want to see. I'd like to see him knock him out, but I don't know if he's got a knockout in him. <laughs> I think he mean? has, and I think he could. That's what yeah. I mean. If he decides, I'm going to go for it. But I like think his levels better than uh, Tom Schwartz. It's, right? it's almost like that because he's so far above him and be- so much better than him. He's just going to use his skills and he's, he's boxing brain to pick him off and what's the bigger the distance. what's the bigger upset? Ruiz beating Joshua or Schwartz beating Fury? What would be the bigger shock? I think I Schwartz because I know about him. Totally at right. least, I, at least I'd Ruiz seen Ruiz on the telly before and I knew who he was and I'd watched him live. I think Ruiz is probably top 10 anyway, debatably, whereas no. Schwartz, nowhere near. That'd be a turn up for the books, wouldn't it? Well, <laughs> Imagine that. Touching on this, we're just clearly overlooking Tom Schwartz. There we are, but yeah. I can already see the justification for some mismatches in the future, in the, in the close future. Oh, well. And I guarantee they will say this on the coverage. Guarantee yeah. they will mention... Oh well, anything can happen. Look at Ruiz and Joshua. Yeah, yeah. You can't just sort a mismatch know, and then say, know, "Oh, it's, it's intriguing." Because once upon a time, some heavyweight did beat it, like upset another heavyweight champion. Like we know it can happen. No, totally it right, just doesn't often happen. So like, uh, I mean, as you say, I think like, Fury's too good for him. He's he's far too skilled. He'll he is. pick him apart. I am envisaging another twelve round shootout. So as I say, same. it wouldn't surprise me if he did catch him with something and put it on him and finish him. It would be nice. If he then goes on to fight Wilder, all for it, he can have uh, these little tune-ups. Agreed. And, I totally agree. Yeah. And Fury gets a little bit of a pass from me in purely because like, he took the two warm-ups and then went straight in with Wilder. He did. So uh, he takes another couple of warm-ups after uh, he's had his layoff so it, uh, and then yeah. gets him with Wilder. And and to his credit, year. he seems, you know, not that I know him or anything, but he seems to have stayed in the gym since Wilder. Hasn't gone back yeah, to his old ways. Ben, ben Davidson at Fred you know can't I mean? be underestimated, I don't think. Aye. Um, I think he, he fits in well with him. He's he's obviously worked on Billy Joe Saunders, who, well, the miles away in terms of weight. Isaac they've got, Isaac they've got that well. similar style, and uh, they both like to box. And Little Isaac as well, aye, are you right there? Obviously, right. Davidson's got that in his locker that he's, he's encouraging that sort of style. He's working with that. He's not trying to change them and go against their instinct, yeah. which... It generally seems to work well. It does seem to be working. Right, yeah, it, it definitely does. I so we'll see how he uh, how he gets on. But let's do another one after next week. Oh, <laughs> sort we'll of reflect. Oh, I will say I will get one done. Um, uh, we're, we're criticizing these boxers for fighting two times a year. That's like the rate of our podcast at the moment. What did you say earlier? Gary Russell yeah. Jr. is more active than us two. <laughs> <laughs> the activity of Gary Russell Jr. Uh, anything northeast to finish on? I don't think there's anything is there we touched on a bit earlier. I think we'll wait until near the Summer Rumble. See what happens with Break Richard. that one down. Make some predictions. Soon. Aye, Summer Rumble. I would look forward to that. Um, Mid-July, Sunday, Stadium. Right? Yes, good. Thinking further ahead. 13th of October. 13th of October. I need we're to put that in your diary. We're going to give a little uh, heads up for that one. Aye, Northeast Boxing Awards. I'll start giving that heads up this week on... Uh, 
social media too just yeah we'll get the posters and things presented out but um, any fans listening from uh, the northeast or anyone fancy traveling up um, Hilton Hotel 13th of October Hilton Hotel this time we're going up in the world ah yeah get um, your be best suit out yeah it'll be the third annual Northeast Boxing Awards we'll get the categories sorted over the next few weeks I as well get some votes in because it'll soon come around and, um, yeah the last two have been cracking little do's and, and I think this one seems the best venue yet as well a chance like, to mingle with uh, some of the Northeast boxers um, some of the trainers promoters and things it, it, generally mm. they've been really well, well received by those in attendance so um, we're looking for this one to be again even bigger and even better. Biggest and best one, yeah. I definitely I would stop pushing that sooner. Social media, get give people plenty of notice. Nice yeah. one. And with uh, that, then we'll wrap that one up. Aye. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Cheers.